Okay, in this first video on virtual articulation in the new 4.2 software, we're just going to go over a couple things that you need to know uh, in order to set up the articulator and make it work correctly. Okay, so we're here in the administration phase. Uh, we're going to do a crown on tooth number 14 and an inlay onlay on tooth number 15. Now, if you have plans on using the virtual articulator, the first thing we want to verify is that it's on. So let's go to configurations, options, click on articulation and make sure that the use articulation is activated. You know, once you do it, it should be defaulted on, but make sure that you have it activated. Now, use articulation for the initial proposal. In general, I like to have this off. And I'll show you what happens when it's on, but uh, when it's off, it, it gives me the ability to visualize where my dynamic uh, occlusal interferences are, are located. And I like to see them uh, just to verify that it's the same uh, in virtually as it is in the mouth, and I, I actually like to adjust it. And the other reason is, is sometimes if you don't have the information uh, acquired correctly or if you don't have enough information and this is checked on, it can actually give you worse proposals. And we'll go over that in a further video. So make sure that your user articulation is activated and uh, I, would, I would place uh, the initial proposal to no. Okay, and the second and most important thing that you need to realize um, is uh, we're here in the, the set model access. We'll go through that in the second video. But you need to make sure that you acquire enough information for the articulator to work. Uh, so often with the blue cam or the red cam before that, we're just used to making these little small models uh, to do just a simple single unit restoration. Now, in order for the articulator to function properly, at a minimum, you have to image to the contralateral canine. Okay, so you see here that we're doing 14, 15, and I imaged all the way over to almost to 28 on the lower. Now, that makes uh, good sense, and why you would have to have all those images is because in order to do the excursive movements in both directions, uh, you usually need the canines to, um, uh, to disclude the teeth properly in those movements. Now, there may be some instances where uh, the, they don't have canine guidance and they're functioning on the posterior teeth, uh, more of a group function. And if you, know, if you locate that in the mouth or notice that that's the, the, the occlusion pattern that that patient has in the mouth, I might actually image the full arch. So you need to verify that uh, more often than not the patients are having some, some sort of canine disclusion. So image, imaging to the contralateral canine uh, often works, uh, or works the best. Okay, so uh, make sure you do it at least to the canine full arch of group function. Uh, with Omnicam, it's not that big of a deal. With uh, Blue Cam, a little bit harder because you have to do a little bit more powdering. The way that I've kind of managed this in my own office is I tend to take all these pictures when uh, the patient's anesthetizing. So I think about it when the patient's numbing up, I have roughly five to seven minutes of downtime. That's when I, when I start imaging. I'll image the opposing all the way to the contralateral canine. I'll image the upper all the way to the contralateral canine, and sometimes even my buccal bite registration. And then I just cut out the tooth or teeth that I'm doing, and then we start, and then by that time I have all that information, I'm pretty much ready to prep. So uh, just make sure you have, in this video, make sure you have everything set up properly and activated, and make sure you acquire enough information for the virtual articulator to work. Uh, in the following videos, we'll go through uh, some more of the details on, on uh, how it works. 